vote themselves in the name of any number of gods, religious and otherwise, to put shackles upon sleeping men. And it helps if you make sure the men are sleeping and the women are sleeping and the children are sleeping before you start. You know, we can talk forever about, you know, how we deal with the banking scams and engineered wars. Waste of time until we get this right. We start to realize uh, that we've had our minds taken away and we need to get them back through this hypnosis. This guy's a hypnotist. He doesn't know he is. The newsreaders on Croatian News and the current affairs programs and the BBC, they're all bloody hypnotists. Because what are they doing? They are constantly repeating false realities to people as if they're real. And 99% of them think they're real. This is what the media does, owned by these families. It's about brainwashing, programming the computer, the Pied Piper, leading us nowhere. And because of this, we live in a world full of repeaters, not questioners, not investigators, not researchers, not even thinkers, but repeaters, just repeating what we've heard from someone else as if it's true. It's like Oscar Wilde, a brilliant British author said, writer said, most people are other people. Their thoughts are someone else's opinions, their lives are mimicry, their passions are quotation. So, we have teacher repeaters. They're repeating what the curriculum tells them they have to tell children. And they're repeating what they learned in their academic careers and at teacher training college. We have doctor repeaters repeating what the medical schools told them that are controlled by the pharmaceutical drug companies who also tell them through the drug reps and free trips abroad to places with white beaches and palm trees what they should believe about the way to treat people, i.e. give them more of our drugs. We have scientists repeaters who just repeat the party line and get the funding as a reward instead of being real open-minded scientific investigators. We have journalist repeaters, oh my goodness I've been in that profession, repeaters. Politician repeaters, I love this line down here, being bent over so long they think it's standing up. Don't say what you really believe because it's a bad career move. It's like a journalist writing what he really believes if it's anti-system. I want to be prime minister, I've got to keep my head down and say what the party wants. And then there's people repeaters. The best one is, everybody knows that. Oh really? How many have spoken of this everyone? Well it's in the paper. So this combination of human repeaters and media, and they're all hypnotists. And if we succumb to it, we take on the false identity. So seeing is believing, that's what we hear, seeing is believing, but it's not. Believing is seeing, because beliefs affect the way we decode reality, therefore what we think we see. And we're constantly being manipulated second by second to take on beliefs that will allow us to um, uh, perceive reality as they, as, as, as they want us to see it. And I've had loads of experiences of myself like this. In, a, in the early 1990s when I started, I was a national television presenter with the BBC. Well known face, um, you know, because you just, you know, sat there and said good evening, welcome and all that stuff that they do. Um, long time ago now. Um, and then I started coming out with this uh, weird stuff, apparently. And I got massive, massive ridicule. And I would meet people, and I'd talk to them, and I would say things to them that were mainstream scientific norms. And they'd laugh. <laughs> Why? Because they had a preconceived idea of me, a belief, he's mad. So anything I said went through the filter, he's mad. So even when I was saying things that scientific main, mainstream was talking about, they laughed. Because that's the way they decoded reality. And what happens is, the brain, like I say, receives electrical information and then constructs reality from that. And what they found is that when you have certain beliefs, rigid beliefs, 
rigid is a very good word, the neurons in the brain fire off in a certain sequence. And what that is symbolic of is the way the brain is reading reality in a fixed way. This is why you can talk to someone with fixed beliefs and it don't matter what you say, it's like talking to a wall because they're not hearing what you say because their brain is not filtering what you say in any way that will challenge the belief system. It's there to defend the belief system, to not hear it. So we're, we're in such a crazy situation in terms of the reality we think we're in compared with the reality we think we are that our, our state is vibrational, energetic, our prime state and only when it passes through the brain decoding system does it become what we call physical in there. And we can be open to multi-levels of reality, not just this one, or we can be closed boxes when we're in that auric state and get, we get caught in, in, in the groove, boom, 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 just repeating the same cycles. And of course, the, 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 thing, the thing to emphasize here is that mainstream scientists who are stuck in the left brain, 99% of the mainstream scientists come, science comes from the left brain. It's the cutting edge stuff, it's, it's some of the quantum physics stuff that goes into the right brain. That's why they can start to see things. The left brain is can't. But the scientist is also decoding reality from a fixed uh, state. So he'll look at something and instead of looking at it open-mindedly and seeing all the possibilities of what it could be, he's reading reality based on the belief system and only reading that which confirms the belief overwhelmingly. And we, ha we have a thing in Britain called pantomimes at Christmas. They're like for kids and families. And one of the um, uh, things about pantomimes is one of the things that they do in all of them is someone standing with the audience and then somebody comes behind them and the audience, the kids in the audience starts shouting, he's behind you, he's behind you and then the guy turns around and this guy goes with him and he says, no, there's nobody there, no, he's behind you. Now that's what is happening with scientists because they look at something in an experiment but they're decoding it through the left brain so they're not actually seeing all the possibilities that exist before them and that's why science goes round and round and round in circles and doesn't move on. As um, Einstein said, science without religion is lame, religion without science is blind. I'd go further than that. Um, science without consciousness is lame, religion without consciousness is blind. In fact, religion with con uh, consciousness means no religion, I would suggest. So this reality can be, I guess, brought down um, to this analogy. We live in a holographic internet. I call it the cosmic internet or the holographic internet. If you say to someone, tell me about the internet, they'll say it's websites and, and, and words and images on a screen. Well, yes, it is, but only on that level, the screen, does the internet exist in that form? Everywhere else, it's electrical circuits, etc., etc. You say to people, tell me about television. They'll say, yeah, it's pictures on a screen, moving pictures on a screen. Yes, it is. But the only place that television exists in that form is on the screen. Everywhere else, it's vibrational fields and electrical circuits and all the rest of it. And we are the same. The only place that this reality exists is on our screen, which is when we construct it in here. And this is why a number of scientists um, have said over the years that they believe, and people go, what? They believe that this reality only exists when it's observed. It only exists in this form when it's observed. Well, now we can start to see why that is true. Because it is the act of observation decoding that brings this reality from the vibrational through the electrical into the um, construct we call the physical world. When we're not observing it, it's just a vibrational construct. So what is the matrix, as they call it, this reality? It's energetic information. It's all information. And we're decoding information and sending out information which others decode and that's how it comes together. Now on another level, the, the body is a liquid crystal, a liquid quartz crystal 
And what do th are they used primarily for in technology? Receiving and transmitting information. Why are we liquid crystals? Because we are transmitters and receivers of information. That's what we are. We have trillions of cells and the membrane of every cell is a liquid crystal. We are crystalline form. And how that uh, crystal decodes reality, what it tunes into um, in terms of frequencies, decides the experience that we have in terms of the, um, the world that we, ex we experience. DNA is crystalline and it's a receiver. This is uh, from a, a, an article I read uh, on um, DNA. From the characteristic form of this giant molecule, a wound double helix, the DNA represents an ideal electromagnetic antennae. On one hand it is elongated and thus a blade which can take up very well electrical pulses. On the other hand, seen from above, it has the form of a ring and thus a, is a very magnetical antennae. It allows us to pick up the information in the construct and turn it into this reality. This is what uh, the shaman source uh, called Don Juan, I believe, of the Carlos Castaneda books said about this, and he's absolutely spot on. We are perceivers. We are awareness. We are not objects. We have no solidity. We are boundless. We, or rather our reason, forget this, and thus we entrap the totalitary, totality of ourselves in a vicious circle from which we rarely emerge in our lifetime until we wake up. And so when you look at the way we're manipulated through words and education programmed, through religion, through all this shite we have in food, electro and chemical um, uh, manipulation and through the manipulation of information, news and everything, these are all together affecting the way we receive and transmit information by affecting the way we interact with information. And it creates a vibrational prison which we experience as being, as people say, stuck in the box, stuck in the bubble, stuck in a world of bewilderment where we're floating around, unable to get a grasp on what the hell we are, where we are, and what's going on. These computer connections, these crystalline transmitter receiver connections are not as this is um, portrayed connected by wires of course not the way it's all works the way this matrix this virtual reality works is exactly the same as the wireless internet if um, this theater has wireless internet I can't see it where the hell is it it's in the no thing or appears to be but if it was there, I could program this computer to pick it up out of nothing, and on that screen would, be cut, would come the World Wide Web out of this. And that's what this construct is, this virtual reality universe. It is information operating on vibrational levels that we can't, with invisible light, see. But the body computer system and the receiver transmitter crystalline system picks it up and turns it into this reality. Now when we get to the second section and the manipulation, this will become stunningly, stunningly relevant. So in the, um, in the Matrix you had this scene where the Neo uh, character is with the Morpheus guy and Morpheus is saying, the matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over.